Welcome back to another training course on Schoology. Okay, in this video, my plan is to cover the courses section of Schoology. This is a general overview. I'm going to run through what a course looks like, what it is, how it's broken down really quickly. Inside of this, I'm going to continue to make more videos that breaks down every section in detail. So again, this is just an overview. If you want to know what a course is and what each of these sections mean, this is the video for you. If you want to go in specifics on one section inside of a course, please check out my later videos. Okay, so let's get started. Assuming that you're inside of Schoology, if you're not, please go back. If you have any questions on what I'm talking about, please go back and watch the Welcome to Schoology video. But assuming you're in Schoology, if we click on courses at the very top of the screen, you're going to see a list of your courses. Now, all these courses are generated for you from Dazzle. So when the secretaries and the principals set up the classes at the beginning of the year and assign the students, these will be auto-created for you. There is nothing else you need to do. Okay. Now, if you're looking at my screen, these courses are created by me. These are junk courses because I'm not actively teaching in class. So these are set up for you to use. Now over here on the far right, I've got this training course video. I'm going to click on this course and it's going to immediately take me inside of my course. Okay, so I'm going to start by going down this side of the screen and then I'm going to cover each section quickly and we'll cover these buttons over here last. Okay, and this side last. Okay, so going down the left side of the screen, the first thing you notice is our course picture. Now, by default, this is going to be very generic, not very appealing. This is what kids see when they click on your course. So this is what they see, how they identify it. If you hover over top of it, you get this edit picture icon. If you click on it, this will allow you to go through and pick one of the pre-designed images from Schoology to set your classroom picture to. If you don't like any of these images, you can choose your own. Notice there is a max file size, so if your picture is too big, it won't work. So that's your options. I can click on one of these pictures and notice it changes. Or I can click Edit Picture and Attach and find the picture on my computer. Please notice where it's pointing you to. Now I wanted to pick a picture off the desktop, so I'll do that. I'll scroll down. I'm going to use the picture I had before, which is just a Schoology image. Um, this helps identify, since this is a training course for Schoology, it only makes sense to use a Schoology picture as my course picture. So I'm going to select that and click Choose. Once the file is uploaded, you'll see it here. And you'll notice that over on the left-hand side, I can actually already see that it's there. From here, I can remove the picture or edit it if I want to go in here and crop the image um, to something else. Now notice this is kind of a, a square image. I don't really want to crop this. I want to leave it like it is. So I'm going to hit cancel and just leave that go. Okay, so that's how I update my course picture. Below the course picture is my course options. If I click on this, I get a few different things. View course as. This allows me if I click on it, to view the course as a member of the, of the class, which means a student. I can click on that member and I can see what the student actually sees. Okay, I'm going to hit back to course to go back to my teacher view. Okay, we'll cover that more in depth later. Again, all these sections will co be covered in depth later. So this is just an overview. Send message allows me to send messages to the entire class. I can choose just admins, which is teachers and co-teachers, or all the members, or all me or just the students. All members actually is everybody, teachers and students, okay? Edit information is information about the course. Privacy settings, this is very, very important. This is what the students see and what they're allowed to do. Okay, we can choose to moderate posts, which means if we're allowing our students to go up and make comments on one of our posts, we can actually say we want to approve these before they're posted. And recycling bin, which we'll talk about later. Um, right below that's materials. This is the page that we started out with, and that's because of the way the course is currently set up. We can change that later, and I strongly advise it because materials is all the materials that you have in the class. Now, 
Hopefully you've got it organized better than this. What I did was I uploaded some old files with old dates. Um, so these are really, really old files that I've put up here, but this is not well organized. Typically I'd want to do folders and say chapter one, chapter two, but in the material section, this is where I can go and I can add folders for organization. I can add assignments, tests, quizzes, assessments. These are very similar, but this one's got a lot more options. Um, both have their pros and cons. I can do discussions, files, uh, web pages, media albums, etc. inside of here. I can also import directly from Google um, and other items. Okay. The options button in here allows me to save this course, everything in it, over to um, my resource folder, which we talked about in the previous video, which means that they're saved from year to year. Okay. So again, this should be better organized, but this is where all of our materials are. The problem with allowing all the students to see this right up front is like you. If you can remember back to when you were in college, for some of us that was a while ago, for some of us it wasn't. But if you remember back to, to when you were in college and you got that college syllabus and you saw everything you had to do for the whole uh, semester, you thought, oh my goodness, there's no way I can ever get this done. Uh, turned out that it wasn't as bad as you originally thought it was, but that's because you could see everything at once. So I really don't like the students to start out on the materials page. Some of you may love it, so that option is there. We'll talk about how to change it later. Updates is quick course updates. This is where you're going to make announcements. Uh, you can tell them that there's an assignment. You can attach assignments to an update. Um, you can do polls and quizzes, but these are just quick updates for the class. What's going on? Hey, don't forget to do the assignment for tomorrow. Remember, there's an upcoming test. Items like that would be uh, what you post here. Now, I strongly recommend this to be your start page for your students, but that's up to you. Next down is Gradebook. This is a gradebook that shows you what kids are doing and what their current grades are in uh, Schoology. Keep in mind that we actually use progress books, so I, I don't really put a lot of weight into this. The progress book is where all of our grades are actually, and that's the most up-to-date class, but gradebook is here. Grade setup is vital. It doesn't matter if we're using the gradebook or not. For Schoology to actually send the grades that you have in Schoology to progress book, you have to set up your grades. You have to set up homeworks, tests, quizzes. That needs to match with what you've got set up in progress book. Once you do that, there's a quick, easy way to make these line up so that when you set up an assignment in here and you say, Schoology, you should grade this assignment, it's not only going to grade it, but it's also going to automatically push those grades into progress book so you don't have to do the work twice. So you can create the assignment, have it graded, have it pushed to a progress book all in one step and you're you're done saving you a lot of time in the process. So this is vital. So please, if you don't know how to set up your grades, check out this future video to cover this entire material. Mastery aligns your student learning objectives with the assignments. So you can actually go in and for each learning objective, see where the students are at. So you can see whether they've mastered the, that objective or whether they need more work. Now please keep in mind, we'll cover learning objectives later, but if you don't set up learning objectives, then you won't be able to check the mastery of it. Badges are stickers. Think of these like stickers that you used to put on assignment. Hey, you have perfect attendance. Hey, great job. Good listener. You can see a list of those over here. The important thing to note is that you aren't limited to um, these stickers. You can actually create your own badges. So uh, the most annoying in class, whatever you want to actually create, that's an option for you. But these are just basically a way to hand out digital stickers to students for online work. This would be great for younger kids. Older kids might enjoy it too, you never know. Um, but that's what badges are, they're stickers. Attendance isn't used inside of Schoology. We do monitor that in progress books, so I'm not going to be covering attendance. Um, just note that you could take attendance here, but until there's an actual link, I don't see the benefit in us using it at all. Members is the members of your course. 
This would include all of your administrators, which is your teachers and your co-teachers, as well as all the students enrolled in the course. You can go up here and you can click on members to see only the students, click on admins to see all of your teachers if you want. There are several options you can do. Again, we'll cover this later. Analytics is a feature that is very, very requested and very few people actually know it exists. This is the section where we can actually click on a student and we can see the progress inside of uh, Schoology. So we can see what assignments have been submitted, when were they, when did they access the assignment, what did they do, what didn't they do. Okay, so this is a feature that if you're wanting to know how to track a specific student and what was accomplished in your class, analytics is definitely something you need to learn to monitor and to check. Now I will tell you there's a back button here to get out of analytics and that will take you a step back. But to get back to your course, you have this breadcrumb trail up here. Just click on your course and that takes you back. Okay. Workload planning, I'm not going to cover right now. Um, we'll cover that in a future video, but for now, we're just going to skip over that. The rest of these options down here are apps that have been added to Schoology. Most of these actually work inside of Schoology without actually leaving. Um, conferences is a nice video conferencing app similar to Zoom or Google Meet that is inside of Schoology already. The students can access and, and you can talk to them through distance learning. The nice part is they can't see each other. So you can see the students and the students can see you, but they can't see each other, which means they're less prone to act up and goof off inside of your lessons. So that is a benefit to conferences over some of the other um, options that are out there. Another really fun one that you should check out is Edpuzzle. If you haven't checked it out, please check it out. You can actually click on Edpuzzle and you'll get a login page. You need to go to Edpuzzle and sign up first. But basically, you can take a video like from Khan Academy or YouTube. You can insert questions in the video. So as the kids watch it, it becomes interactive. So they have to answer their questions and you get a feedback on what their answers and stuff was. Um, again, you haven't checked it out, please check it out. Some of these actually don't work. I need to clean them up. So hopefully by the time school starts, these will all be cleaned up and we'll get some of this out here. Like for instance, Discovery Education is old, outdated, and we don't have a valid license for it anymore. So it actually just says bad request if you click on it. Okay, going back to the materials, which is where we usually start our course. I already told you what this is. The other couple things I want to show you real quick is up in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice we've got this little notebook. This allows you to quickly switch between courses. If I was to click on another course, I would be taken to that same page. So if I'm on updates, for instance, I would see my updates. I could jump into my training course and it would take me to that same page. So say, for instance, you're updating a uh, an assignment and you want to jump from one course to the other. Well, instead of going to courses, clicking on the course, make sure you go to materials and then go to the assignment. You can just click right here and jump straight to that course. Okay, notifications. This is where you can change your notification preferences. So this button up here that we talked about in the last video to get notification alerts. A lot of people get confused and they say it's not very helpful. Um, typically it's because they're not set up properly yet. Notifications is a big topic and there's a lot of places to add and change notifications. This is one of them. In your courses you can actually go in here, click on notifications and choose which ones you want to get. For instance, if you want to see comments on any of your posts, check that box. Assignment submissions, okay, I want to see anytime someone submits an assignment. Or a test and quiz submission, anytime they submit, I want to see that. Uh, course comments on updates, assignments, and discussions, maybe I do want to see that. Okay, you can see a lot of different information. Be careful that you don't check too many of these because it can get annoying if you have 5 million notifications a day. So just check the ones that you really want. You can always come back in and change them. Um, same thing goes true. If you check too many, you can always come back in and uncheck them. Just make sure you click Save Changes. Now it's important to note, when you do it here inside of a course, you are changing the notifications for this course, not for every course. So you see I've got these three selected here. If I jump over to another course, Let's just jump over to, that was the same course. I was afraid I was going to do that. Let's do 
this one here and I go to notification, notice that this is not the same. I'm not going to get notified when someone submits an assignment or a test or quiz. I have to change it in each course in order to get those notifications. So please keep that in mind. Okay. And then the final thing I need to cover real quick is this upcoming. This is going to tell you if you have something that is due soon. So if I have a test in this case, this test has a due date of May 20th, 2020 at 12.58 a.m. It's going to let me know that on that date, this test is due. These other items, notice this one here has already expired and it's not even published. It's not going to be up here because it's already passed. So keep in mind, this is your upcoming quick calendar view. The students see the same thing as you see. They'll see all your upcoming assignments inside of here, inside of this calendar. So that covers it for the basic course overview. Um, next lesson, we'll start digging into the course options a little bit more so we can cover um, what these are. Okay.